as a charity, we are vulnerable and we feel vulnerable. And it makes for a nervous time, particularly when the economy is weak. But uh, we do our best uh, to keep the profile of this sort of uh, healthcare high and um, uh, let people know that it, it really is important. It's Friday morning. London is at its busiest. A young woman has been hit by a double-decker bus on her way to work. She now lies trapped beneath it. If you're trapped underneath a big, heavy vehicle, the dispatcher will dispatch us immediately. I don't uh, initially, and... Uh, She's gone under a bus. She's been pinned under a bus for 20, 25 minutes. The whole weight of the bus is on her chest. Right. Okay. I think we don't call to have a contact with her. You've got terrible, terrible thoughts running through your, your, your mind, obviously. The accident happened on Oxford Street. It has brought central London to a standstill. Really, anywhere in the real centre of London, the really built-up area, it gets very hard to find a spot to land a helicopter. But these pilots are excellent. They'll land us as close as possible, which in this case was Marble Arch, which is, I think, about three blocks up Oxford Street from where this accident happened, but still a fair jog through crowded streets. At that time of day, uh, you've got people rushing to work, you've got people um, out for the early morning shop, you've got tourists. Coming through! When we got there, to find her in the position that she actually was, lying on her back with her knees up to her chest almost, in a fetal position, was very unusual and I've never seen anything like that whatsoever. I'm Steve, I'm from the area. How many inches do you think you're We've got an large airbag, we'll take out as much as you need. Okay, so she's, she's pretty tight on there, but yeah, right. we need about that much space to get it. Okay. The patient is Luella, a 31 year old jewellery designer. The bus on top of her weighs 12 tonnes and is putting extreme pressure on her chest. It was very clear that she was in a critical state, mainly because she, the bus was pushing down on her legs into her chest, and she was really struggling to breathe. Jeff, two moles of ketamine to stop, and that's... There's a few ton of red bus sitting on top of that lady. That needed to be lifted, a good foot, foot and a half, for us to extricate her safely. It's up, it's up. You ready? Matt. Right, carry on. Carry on, keep going. Patients who have suffered sort of traumatic injuries can go downhill pretty quick, so it's just a case of speed. Speed is the, uh, is the buzzword at the moment. We just get her out on the bed and then we can assess her from there. Our colleagues in the fire brigade did themselves proud. They got the bus up very quickly and we were able to extricate her safely. She was quite a petite lady, which was fortunate for her. Um, had it been a big lump like myself, I think we could have been looking at a different ending, perhaps. One, two, three. Now she is clear of the bus. The doctor is able to give Luella a proper examination. One of the biggest causes of preventable deaths from trauma is missed injuries. So that's the reasoning behind removing all the clothing. The pelvis was fractured and it didn't look like that she had lost much blood from it. She looked quite stable from that point of view. The only concern left then was head injury. There's clearly a big bullseye in the front of the bus windscreen and she was quite slow in her reactions and slightly confused as to what was going on. We're going to take you to the London Hospital which specialises in this and we're going to give you a lot On top of her drowsy semi-conscious state, Luella is showing worrying signs of traumatic asphyxiation. 
All right, I'm ready to start. Are you guys ready to yeah, start? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, we're going to give you the medication that's going to put you to sleep now, all right? Yeah. 9710. It was a case of uh, anaesthetising her, controlling her breathing for her, and uh, triaging her back to the Royal London so that the trauma surgeons could assess and do what needs to be done. I'd like to get going as soon as we can now. Dots around her eyes, you can see them around her face, around the neck here. That's all from being crushed and not being able to take proper breath in. I've got a 31 year old female, she's a pedestrian uh, trapped under a bus. Uh, she was trapped for about 25 minutes. Well done, everyone. This is Luella. She was a pedestrian hit by a double decker bus. As well as her chest being crushed, further tests in hospital showed that Luella had two pelvic fractures and a laceration to her head. Twisted angle and a lower limbs on her chest. I think her guardian angel was working overtime that day. I mean, she could have so easily have, have died you know, and, and, and quite easily have been dead before we even turned up. Um, she's a very, very lucky lady, very lucky indeed. Only a week after her accident, she is nearly ready to leave hospital. Without all of these people, I mean, my story might have been quite different. I do think some kind of miracle has happened. I'm not really a religious person, but well, for everyone else, they, they thought I was maybe dead. The phone calls that my boyfriend got and other family relatives then. <laughs> so, it's, yeah, it's just more the sort of pressure that I put on everybody else. Because for me, you know, I, I never felt like I was dying. I felt like I was fine and just needed the bus off me. Um, but, yeah, it's just more what you've put everyone else through and the bus driver and... But, you know, obviously it makes you kind of think I've obviously been given another chance. But, yeah, I'm just, you know, really grateful to, to everybody, basically. It's been three months since the Medic One team came to the aid of motorcyclist David. Having broken both his femurs, he's had several major operations and is still in hospital receiving physiotherapy. I've always said I want to get back out and walking or else. I'm doing well so far, I'm standing um, and I'm working towards it and it just comes down to walking out of here on crutches. If it wasn't for them, and the fact that they got to me as quickly as we did, and they did what they did, there's a very good chance I wouldn't be here talking to you now. I particularly love this job because patients become ill or injured well before they get to hospital, and they need the same sort of interventions that we deliver at the hospital.